that I want you to think about. According to God, purpose defines men. Men don't define purpose. A very interesting statement. Makusudi ya mungu ndiyo wamua maisha ya mtu. Maisha ya mtu hayamui makusudi ya mungu. Kwa mambo mengine, the value of a man's life is not in itself. It is in the purposes of God. On this account, throughout the Bible, when man missed on purpose, God eliminated life. Either by literally killing them or by posing them and let them die with time so that he can raise men and women who will run with purpose. A, a, a very painful truth. Mungu hangali tu maisha ya mtu kama maisha ya mtu. Kuna viti ya kutosha huko Jose. Angali tu maisha ya mtu kama maisha. Anaangalia kama makusudi. Kwamba Mungu anahusika na makusudi kuliko pumsi. Wakati watu walipoteza makusudi ya Mungu na kuishi kwa ajili ya chakula cha kila kisiku. God literally killed them or post time and let that generation waste away through death. Very interesting. Wakati wana wa Israeli walikata kwenda kana na wakansa kulalamika kwa sabi ya chakula na vinyuaji. Mungu aka post time Ingawa alitoa watu milioni tatu misri. Alipos safari. Akawarusu watangatange kwa mlima changwani. Mbaka mtu wa mwisho alipokufa. She. Mmelo kina nimesema kweli. Out of three million. One day he killed 24,000 at once. Listen. God created man for purpose. Purpose is superior to man. When the enemy came, listen to me. When the enemy came to the garden of Eden, he focused on the need of man at the expense of the purpose of man. The man had everything he needed in the garden. But the devil still triggered what I call extra appetite. Adam alikuwa nakula tunda ya nini? Alikuwa nanja. Alikuwa na ugonjwa fulani inahitaji uponyaji. The enemy reduced man to a need oriented being. That there is something God hid. Proverbs, we are addressing the issue of identifying your mission. A man's life is defined by their mission. I was taught this in 1994 by Bishop Licavo on the power of purpose. And that changed my life. We had never met Miles Mundro. You know, he went to the Bahamas and he came with some powerful truth. And those who impressed that, the power of purpose and potential. Those of you who are alive in 1994, 95, 96, 97, lunch hours at Mountain View. You remember the teachings on purpose and potential. Potential and purpose. Listen. Your life is never measured by age. Your life is measured by purpose. 
Na kama kuna kitu adui anayasafanya kwa maisha yako. Ni kukusungusha na mahitaji ambayo sio masababu ya maisha yako. Proverbs chapter 16 verses 4 says the following and, and, and then i will give you why the enemy would want to orient us on needs at the expense of purpose and i want to say this i want you to write down men who miss on purpose become prisoners of needs men who miss on purpose and when i say men women inclusive become prisoners of needs Let's go back. Let's go back to Matthew for a moment and then come back to Proverbs. I want to say a statement that I think you need to think about. Therefore I tell you stop being worried. Let's read together. Louder than you are. If you are not reading I'll bring the microphone to where you are. Let's try it again. Stop being worried. Perpetually uneasy, distracted about life as to what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body as to what you will wear is life not more than food and the body more than clothing now let me make this statement and I want you to write down you don't have the capacity to meet your needs the only thing it can do is to take you around the mountain until it completely destroys you you don't have the capacity to meet your needs you don't when your life is need oriented you'll have what i call a desire with a bottomless end i call it a bottomless beat nothing is enough if the orientation are needs while men are need oriented god is purpose oriented now listen god takes care of our needs within our purpose but he will never take care of our purpose in our needs and asema stop it Musisumbukie mutakula nini mutafani hiyo neno kukula ni saidi ya chakula ni is when the motivation is to quench some appetite some need it could be an appetite to be known the appetite to be seen the appetite to be loved the appetite to be recognized the appetite to look like anybody else a need is that which informs your desire for public recognition now listen god wraps your needs in your purpose but he will never put your purpose in your needs look at exodus look at exodus we we mentioned in passing yesterday but let, let's look at exodus for a minute exodus chapter 17 verses 1 exodus chapter 17 verses 1 then all the congregation of the children of israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages <laughs> by what stages according to the commandments of the lord and camped around that place but there was no water for the people to drink so what happened in verses 2 therefore the people quarreled with moses and said give us water so that we may have something to drink and moses said to them why do you quarrel with me why do you tempt the lord and try his patience now what was the quarrel water what was the promise canaan what was the quarrel water thirst need the next part but the people were thirsty for water need and the people murmured against moses and said why did you bring us up from egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst need What was purpose? Canaan. 
What is in Canaan? Milk and honey. What they were crying for in the wilderness was wrapped up in purpose in plenty. They are crying about water. They are crying about food. God is saying, these are temporary. Do not worry. They don't define life. Go to Canaan. There is more than water. There is milk. There is honey. There are homes you did not build. There are vineyards you did not plant. Focus on purpose. But you know what the devil wanted? Need imprisons men away from their purpose. Listen, friends. Needs have no destiny. Needs are a mountain of oppression. I want you to orient your mind. You cannot go to school because of needs. Needs are short-sighted. Needs focus on today. Needs focuses on now. Needs focuses on appetite. Listen. Men driven by need would rather eat their tomorrow today. Men of purpose would rather sacrifice their today for tomorrow. Huh? People driven by need will eat their future. People driven by purpose will fast their today. Look at chapter, are, are we, are we, look at verses 4. Quickly, so that we go somewhere. So Moses cried out to the Lord for help, saying, what shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. That's exactly the position of every pastor. If you don't meet people's needs, they will stone you either with words or with attitudes. Look at chapter, uh, that was chapter 17. Look at chapter 16, verses 1. <laughs> 16 verses 1. The Bible says what? Um, they, sat, they set out from Elim, Elim and all the congregation of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between that place and that place, and 15 days of the second month. And then what did they do? Verses 2. The whole congregation of Israel grew discontented and murmured and rebelled against Moses and Haran in the wilderness. What was their contention? The Israelites says to them, would that we had died by the land of the Lord, by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat and ate bread until we were full. For you have brought us out here to the wilderness to kill us, this entire assembly. People who are need oriented will sell their testimony for immediate needs. I will show you. You remember the story of Esau and Jacob. Esau was need oriented. Kuna viketi ko pale. Ebu ni saidi ya kusonga baba kidogo. Songa tu kidogo. Thank you so much. Songa mam. Songa kidogo so that nobody pushes you. Esau was need oriented. Wale ni wale watu ambao amani yao na furaha yao inaamuliwa na mfuko wao na sio mfuko wa maana, mfuko wa wa leo. Yesu akasema haki yangu makusudi yangu ile baraka ile kibali cha Mungu ya kuwa msaliwa wa kwanza haina maana mahitaji yangu ya sasa inashinda urithi wa firstborn i am willing to let go this thing and take care of my need he sold his birthright for soup and the Bible says he sought for it bitterly, but never found it. Did you hear what I said? Eso mwenye walisema, kuna faida gani kuwa na makusudi ya kuwa musaliwa wa kwanza. Faida yake ni nini? Soup ni afadali kuluko urithi wa mwana wa kwanza. In mentorship, they say, if you are mentoring people, expose them to soup. 
and discover their motive before you entrust them with treasures. They say, if you want to test a son, take them to a place of exposure. Watch their attitude and then know where to place them. Don't be excited when your mentor takes you on a trip. It's called attachment. Huh? Your mentor can deliberately give you money. Just give you money to see what level of stewardship you are in. Look at chapter 16, verses 15 of Exodus. Ebony said, I am a purpose driven person. I am a purpose driven person. Listen to the spirit of need. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not. Which verse is that? Look at verses, uh, verses 15. Is that verses 15? For they did not know. Go to the next part. This is what the Lord had commanded. It was a command, not a suggestion, not a proposal. Let every man gather as much, as, much of it as he needs. Take an omer. An omer was a container that was equivalent to korogoro. It was enough for a family meal. Okay? Chukua mana kiasiyo. Enye natosha familia. For each person, according to the number of people, each of you has in his tent. Angalia verse 17. The Israelites did so. But some gathered much of it and some only a little. Waliambua kila mtu kwa sababu mana itakuja kila siku. Usibebe saidi ya kila unaitaji kwa hiyo wakati. Lakini wa, kwa sababu wa Kenya walikuwa. <laughs> Wengine wakabeba saidi ya kila waliitaji kukula. Ili wa reserve for tomorrow. But look at the wisdom of God. But when they measured it with an omen, he who had gathered a large amount had no excess. And he who had gathered little had no lack. Every man gathered according to his own need family. Give me another version. Give me another version of that. Give me another version of that. Niwambi a story apa. Ndio mujue vile needs ina zakutuwa. Waliambiwa kusanya ina tosha sukuyo. Kesho kujia ingine. Na ukikula ikipaki kwa saani. Usiweke. Lakini kwa sababu ya need oriented. That aspect of mistrusting God. Mungina akabeba kunia musima. Lakini Biblia nasema kwamba wakati walienda kukawa kwa pakuli. Kunia moja ikatosha tu pakuli tatu. Ebu nisaidia mambia jirani yako. Iyo ina sound kama mimi. Nafanyanga kasi ya punda. Lakini Kenya na ang. But when they measured out what they had gathered, those who gathered more had no extra, and those who gathered less weren't short. Each person had gathered. Doesn't that answer the question? Kwa nini watu nyanafanya bengi, manager, boda boda, house girl, watu wa ora hora, uchumi yao ni tese. Koro koro ni hile, mamamboga ni yule yule. Hakuna kitu wengine wanakula kuliko wengine. Kwanini, when you are need oriented, you will never attract provision. Now, I want you to listen to this statement. God will never provide for needs. He will supply for your needs, but he will provide for purpose. Now, the problem is here. Listen to the problem. If you give a man resources for purpose, they will tailor it into needs. I have a young man I was mentoring. This young man was need-oriented. Need-oriented. 
unampea mtu shilingi elfu kumi ya kwanza biashara lakini kwa sababu ndugu ni kati ya wale walibaki changwani mpaka ataenda kuangusha elfu moja kwanza kwa kuku you know what i'm talking about afadhali landlord angoje hiyo elfu moja baadaye lakini kutoka penye unampea one day